Hi there, welcome to Two Devs on the Sofa. My name's Charlie. And I'm Mike. And today we've got a very, very special guest. Very special guest, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Vera Hophouse, I'm the MP for Bath. Brilliant, cool. So we've, uh, we've got very lucky to have Vera here today. We're going to talk a little bit about tech in the Southwest and uh, probably start off with, well, Mike, have you got a question? Yeah, uh, so I guess the best place to start really is to just um, ask you how, you know, how tech has affected your role uh, and you know, what, what kind of changes you might have made or, or, or how, how it impacts what you do. So I have only been the MP for a year, so the, the changes over the years that, impo uh, that um, technology has Im improved uh, the job as the MP is obviously hasn't affected me so much, but I can sort of say from being having been a councillor for ten years that definitely the fact that you you know people can get you so much more quickly has made a huge difference. Simply in terms of you know your surgeries, people don't actually come physically to you anymore, but can chat to you um, <coughs> via email, but obviously now also via Facebook and Twitter. Sure. Um, you need to be aware of all these platforms, and I think. Uh, you have to be quite flexible yeah, and not yeah. miss anything. So that's the, 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 the pitfalls because people say, well, I tried to get hold of you and I say, ooh, uh, and they say, oh, I, I sent you a Twitter message. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, but, but the, the immediacy of social media yeah, is obviously sure. brilliant for politics. So it means you have to be a lot more available to it. You, know, you have to be very on top of all, all of the different platforms and, and making yourself very available to lots more questions than you used to. Definitely. So it becomes a little bit more twenty four seven. Sure. Um, and I suspect everybody would say at some point turn your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. You're just so you're you work with it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So in terms of the accessibility that people now have to you, do you find that the s similar questions are coming up to you? Is it just that people are asking them in different ways, or is it opening up to whole new conversations because it's people that wouldn't normally engage with the process in, in the past? Well, definitely. I mean, I also have the um, uh, the advantage now that whenever I speak in Parliament. It can be e easily sort of taken off. It's always filmed, um, and my team sort of puts it immediately on Twitter or Facebook, and people see what I actually do in Parliament. Oh, really um, so that that helps, um, and then people sort of get involved. Um, recently, I've done a, a campaign around upskirting. And I suspect uh, in, in in the sort of usual old-fashioned way of media, it would just not have got anywhere. So yeah. you know that for that reason, technology is brilliant. Yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a massive sort of move and shift towards sort of social justice missions, yeah. particularly based around social media as well. So it's a really good place to find the following for, for causes and yeah. things that are important to people that perhaps might not have got exposure in the past as well. Yeah, and then there, there are e-petitions. I mean, even, you know, we even yeah. debate things now that yeah. if enough people have signed an e-petition, it goes to Parliament and be debated. So, brilliant. you know, get going, guys. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, sure, brilliant. Yeah, I imagine that's changed quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, um, with, with us being based in Bath, we're very on top of uh, trying to push Bath as much as we can. Uh, but we, we love being in Bath and being a tech company in Bath. It seems like it's a really nice place to be. What is it about Bath, do you think, that encourages people to come, want to move here to work or to, to stay here once they've set up here as well, do you think? Well, Bath has got a fantastic quality of life, I'd say. Oh, I mean, yeah. obviously it has a little bit this sort of twee, <laughs> um, nice <laughs> historic image, but yeah. actually um, that technology has come to the area mm -hmm. um, and together with Bristol, it's become this sort of tradition and innovation thing um, yeah. and it works really well. It's not um, that cheap to live in, but it's definitely cheaper than London. Exactly. Um, and they, you know, people just like to live here, and I think that's a great selling point. Yeah, definitely. I love the I love the mix in Bath between the history and the tech. It's like the old and the new all in one city at the same time, which is a really nice sort of balance. That, 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 for me, that's why I live here. That's yeah. why I love Bath. But there's a lot of the, uh, the tech tech based universities as well. Bristol and Bath have got huge tech departments exactly. in them. And they're pushing out these massive projects. I, I know at the moment there's a there's a huge rollout of the five G testing the five G network for mobile phones, which is being spearheaded by some of the people in the southwest as well. Yeah, which is great. But yeah, yeah. it's it, it, quantum it's, computing research at Bristol University. Yeah, yeah And once you create a hub, yeah, it uh, sort of acts like a magnet, doesn't it? Definitely. So, um, yeah, yeah. There's people here already, mm -hmm. um, and more people will come. And uh, you know, I obviously want to support that because I really want to represent a city that is in the twenty first century. Yeah, and it's really nice to seeing that kind of juxtaposition between a very old traditional city and then this whole yeah. new tech side of it as well. I think they're marrying quite nicely. Uh, yeah. it, it's, a, it's really got a lot of people that are very enthusiastic about living in Bath. It's not just a, a means to an end as well. And let's not forget if you're a really keen sort of outdoor, outdoorsy sort of 
Have you seen that yeah. interview with the beautiful countryside? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 everybody, doesn't it? Definitely. And um, I'm a great cyclist, so I always find it's important to get around quickly. So cycling and all that sort of stuff is, is also something that people like to do. You know, it's just yeah. a good city to live in. It can yeah. be better. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, the cycling is quite brave with the hills that we have here as well. That's the way to do it. That's tech. <laughs> yeah, that's tech. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I guess the, the 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 sort of the last thing we really want to talk about is is what your views are on sort of the future of education, particularly sort of higher education. Obviously, there's some things going on in Parliament at the moment uh, um, uh, around. Um, uh, around what the future of universities will be, particularly around tech with these institutes of, of, of technology, and you know what, what your views are on, on, on you know where education is going. But for me, the most important thing is that it is fair to all that everybody yeah. can um, reach their full potential. And I personally don't think university education is the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. uh, where we have fantastic universities like here in Bath, 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 Bath University of Bath, obviously, you know, we're yeah. proud of it. But we also have um, Bath College just across the road, right. yeah. um, and. You know, there's varying degree, uh, very uh, different ways of uh, becoming qualified and getting good qualifications, and it yeah. doesn't have to be a university course. Right. And often people now find um, university education is very expensive, yeah. so finding good alternatives um, is for me very, very important. But the main thing is it has to be inclusive. Hundred percent. I think that that's that's so true with regards to the kind of funnels of people into different industries. University used to be the be all and end all, but it's definitely a shift away away from that now and I, I'd agree uh, and I think that that will help the industry itself at the moment as it, we've got huge problems with diversity within the tech industry because it seems like a lot of people that are within the industry kind of straight white male is, is the predominant uh, yeah dominant. straight out of university computer science degrees yeah and that actually there's there's so many more people that could be part of this industry and it's not for that they're not capable it's just that they don't realize it's an option so yeah. I think trying to kind of diversify with the places and the funnels of people coming into the industry is is a really good alternative thing. routes of education. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. reason why girls are not that interested in technology? I, you I think? Know. I mean, is it really yeah. that obvious? I, th I think it's just it's inherent in sort of socially and culturally. I think it's yeah. one of those things like girls like pink, boys like blue. It's one of those things that, it, and it's it's ne it's, it's <laughs> harmful as well, isn't it? Into that having that view mm. and the idea that uh, if you're as a child, the things that you're encouraged to do as a girl. Yeah is to go and do something to do with princesses and if you're a guy you go and do things with spaceships and, the, and it's very antiquated view. Oh, computer's pink. Exactly, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this, this is it, the, the, the lines could be totally blurred because the things that, yeah. that children are becoming interested in now that, that we have things like computer science, the GCSE yeah. and, and computers are introduced into the education system a lot earlier. Uh, like yeah. everybody's enthusiastic about it, but it's about instilling an idea that people can believe that they can actually do something with yeah. that as a career as well. So that's yeah. what we really want to. Push. And so, in terms of the ethnic mix and the ethnic background, mm -hmm. I mean, if you say it's a boy girl thing, but why not people from different backgrounds? I, you know, I really yeah. find it difficult to understand. Is it's that true, because yeah. they don't come through the education system? I, I, you know what, I don't think we have an answer for that one, and no. I think it's a, it's a question that's been asked a lot across the yeah. industry. It's like, something we're trying to, you know, we're trying to address a lot ourselves. Yeah. Okay, there's there's well. lots of different groups that are massively underrepresented, uh, and, and we'd yeah. also like to think about kind of ladies come back from maternity leave as well. Oftentimes, it takes a few years out of the industry, and the, the speed at which the tech industry moves means that they feel very out of the loop. But that's not the case because they they have the capabilities to be really really useful and and to really push the whole industry forward as well. But you would have thought that you can actually do this from home, and there's a lot of yeah, um, yeah, flexible working there would yeah. actually suit um, uh, yeah. you know, people I who think are... I think um, it's the ideal industry for, for those kind of people yeah. for that reason, because yeah. you can you can work from home, you can, um, many companies allow flexi time, allow part-time working, remote working, remote working, all of that kind of stuff. So it is actually, you know, it's, 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 very, it's a very well-suited industry for all sorts of people from all sorts of walks of life. Um, it's just about getting that message out there. I think there's still a little bit of a stigma around about tech industry and, and particularly about programming, about being, you know, it's a bunch of guys sitting in a basement and yeah. you know, it's not that. If programming <laughs> isn't that, like, that's not what we I mean, we're we not in a basement all. anymore, are we? We're, we're <laughs> no, no, we're allowed, we're allowed, allowed outside. outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, watch this space. Yeah. 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 The ceiling. Exactly, so, yeah. Yeah. exactly. But, the, but yeah, no, it's something that we're really looking forward to kind of addressing as much as we can in the future. But yeah, very exciting time to be a part of the industry as it grows. Well, I think that's probably all we've got time for today. Yeah, but I uh, just want to say a really special thank you to Vera. Yeah, thank you thank very you. much for coming and talking yeah, to us. Yeah, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time then. Yeah. So bye. bye.